Welcome to Stuff They Didn't Teach Me in Sunday School. Nations, corporations, even family businesses rise and fall on the quality of the leaders. The nation of Israel was secure as long as it saw its leader, its king, as Yahweh, as God Almighty. When they began to look for leadership in other places, they found failure, they found human weakness. The problem with Eli as a leader was that his sons weren't faithful. And when, when we find Samuel, we find the same thing. If you look at 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 3, Yet his sons did not walk in his ways, but turned aside after, after gain. They took bribes and perverted justice. So even though Samuel is a solid leader, his sons are not going to be. And the nation immediately looks at the nations around them and says, You know what we really need here? We need a king. Samuel is distraught. God said, Samuel, don't worry about it. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me by asking for a king. And God says, go ahead and give them a king, Samuel. But before you do, you tell them what kings will do. And in, second, in 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 10 and following, Samuel tells them what kings will do. He talks about harsh taxation. He talks about their building programs. He talks about enslaving their sons. He talks about kings amassing their wealth at the expense of the people that the kings rule. In short, he describes most of the rest of the kings of the nation of Israel. And still the people want a king. God directs Samuel to Saul but the piece I want you to look at closely here is how God terms this whole situation. First Samuel chapter 10, Samuel is anointing Saul to be the king of this nation. And in chapter 10, then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it on his head and kissed him, Saul, and said, has not Yahweh anointed you to be prince over his people Israel? And you shall reign over the people of Yahweh and you will save them from the hand of their enemies round about. And this shall be the sign to you that Yahweh has anointed you to be prince over his heritage. Other translations use different terms like commander and some other terminology. I like the RSV translation prince because it best captures what's going on here. God never calls the king of Israel king. He always calls the king prince. The prince is second in command, you see, and God never yielded the throne. God always remains the king of this nation, even though the people don't recognize him. God never abdicated his throne. And so when he speaks of the leader of that nation from here on, from Saul on, he will always speak about him as the prince, the second in command. It would have done the nation of Israel well to remember who their king was but they often forgot. And still God loved them. And still God cared for them. It would do us well today to remember who our king is. And yet we forget. And still God loves us. And still God calls us back to himself. He is the king. 